Hello, motorcycle enthusiasts. Tricky topic today. I know you all like to use good tools. Many of you have a lift in your small hobby workshop. No one has a toolbox from a discount store. But when it comes to this, it's often claimed, oh, the inexpensive device. It can surely do. The same as the expensive one. Why should I spend so much money on it? Ultrasound is ultrasound. What I haven't heard before, afterwards it said, yes, you can't get everything clean with it either. Why that is and that it's by far not the same, we'll show you today. Today we have on the table, for comparison, a Bandolin RK156BH, a heated device, and here next to it. One. Yes, you might recognize that from the various sources available for it, like different auction houses or sales platforms. Yes, so uh, I'll just say a no-name device and both hold six liters. So it's basically the same size. A very important difference, and I'll elaborate on that later, the Bandolin has a cleaning frequency of 35 kilohertz. The inexpensive one has 40 kilohertz. In terms of performance, both are roughly on par. This one states 250 watts power consumption. Here, 230. That's a tiny bit more and this one a bit less. But I think that's in such a tiny range that it can actually be neglected. Both devices have a heater. Here, it's very simply done with a rotary knob. Over here, you have a pre-selection with a digital display. Both heaters work quite well. We tested and measured it, so that's okay. And now let's continue right away. Let's take a look up here at the size and shape of the basin. If you see this here, a four-cylinder carburetor battery fits perfectly in here. This is a slim and long basin. And now let's take a look over here, how it looks. And here we already have the first problem due to the shape. Sure, it also works for a two-cylinder carburetor. But if you consider, I just checked what sizes these devices come in. If you consider that you also need to fill in a suitable cleaner at a certain concentration. Then for this carburetor, for example, you need a device that is significantly larger, in the range of 15, 16 liters. That means you have more than double the amount of cleaning fluid compared to over here. Here it's six liters, and due to the shape, it fits perfectly. And here with these inexpensive devices, it is essentially just enlarged. So if this side gets longer, this side also gets longer but you basically have the same rectangular shape. So that is actually a major disadvantage, especially from a financial perspective, because you need the cleaning medium. The next point with the branded device is that the basket is hung on the side. So it doesn't have feet at the bottom. It hangs here on the right and left edges of the device and does not touch the ground. This is important because anything that stands directly on the ground, including small stones and crumbs, which you always need to clean well, reduces performance. And if we now look over here, here, a much simpler solution has been found. You see these four uh, black points. These are rubberized feet. I lift it up a bit so you can see it. And with these feet, the basket simply stands on the ground. This is a point that actually consumes the device's performance, so to speak, and is not available. For the cleaning task, now we come to this important point. Why is it sometimes the case that something is placed inside these inexpensive devices? And it might even look wonderfully clean on the outside, but it doesn't work. People then say to me, oh, come on, ultrasound doesn't clean everything either. In essence, I have a significantly greater ability to clean everything than with all other known methods or possibilities. But why is there this difference? So. This device operates at a frequency of 35 kilohertz and this one at a frequency of 40 kilohertz. I don't want to digress too much. It can't be summed up in two or three sentences. I'll try to keep it very brief. This sound frequency is important because the sound frequency is responsible for how small the openings are that the sound can penetrate. This means that you can certainly have a device that cleans a workpiece or a carburetor fantastically from the outside, but the sound, due to the wrong frequency, is not able to penetrate into the very small nozzle holes and channels. So, nozzles, hands are unscrewed, but sometimes there are also pressed ones. This is a factor that is completely overlooked and hardly anyone deals with. 
Of course, the power also plays a big role, but an even bigger role is played by the even fall and distribution of power within the device. And now we will conduct a small experiment. You can use aluminum foil, ordinary aluminum foil, to increase the effect of the ultrasound device. Visible. So we have four equally sized pieces of aluminum foil. And we place them at the bottom of the basket and once on the water surface of the device. And when I turn on the devices, you won't hear a sound because uh, the camera or our microphone can't capture it that way. Additionally, this device is incredibly loud, so actually you would need to leave the room. So we will expose this aluminum foil for four minutes, and then we'll show you the result. So friends, our little experimental setup is already finished here. Down there, you see a piece of aluminum foil, simply weighted down by the wrench to keep it in place. There's one on top as well. And over here with the inexpensive device, we've done exactly the same. And now I'm setting both devices to exactly four minutes. We'll let it run for four minutes. You can see a bit of it, you can watch a little, but without the sound of the devices, because as I said, the microphone really can't handle it. Besides, it's really loud and unpleasant, at least with the inexpensive ones. The bundling device is very, very quiet in comparison. So let's get started right away. So folks, the four minutes are up and let's take a look at how things are here. Specifically the foil at the very bottom, I ask you to pay attention to that. Of course, you can always see a bit where the transducers are located, the effect is greater there, but even in the middle, the impact of the sound is actually visible everywhere. And the foil floating up here, you can also see it quite clearly. These small dots are, and these small holes and so on are all the effects of this mechanical um, cleaning performance of the ultrasound. If we look in here now, you can see the foil down there. And if you take a look, in the middle it's actually still quite smooth. This means that the propagation of sound in the device is significantly worse, also to the right and to the left. And the big difference now is the foil up here. I think you can't really see it that well on the video. It has actually sunk significantly deeper than with the other device. So with the other device, it lies on the water surface and here it is bent down a bit and there's basically almost nothing on it. And now we are exactly at this point. The carburetor gets nice and clean on the outside. Maybe I'll turn it a few times so that the bottom, where the power in the device is greater, is also at the bottom occasionally. And then it looks great, but it doesn't work the way you would like it to. That's just the downside of these inexpensive devices. First, the wrong sound frequency. Second, the shape of the tank simply doesn't fit in many cases. And third, as you can see, the power is simply not evenly distributed throughout the device. This is the most, most important point of this test. So friends, now we've taken out the foil again. I think I don't need to say much about this, it's clearly visible, but now a little closer. 
Here you can see very, very clearly that the effect of the ultrasound has already worked quite well there. And with the other, the inexpensive device, there's basically almost nothing to see. So here, just a tiny bit and a minimal bit at the edge. But otherwise, there's basically nothing to see. That means, as I already said, the distribution in the device is basically inadequate. And finally, a note, it is very, very important to use the right cleaning chemistry, that is the right cleaning medium, Tkopo R, for the flawless technical cleaning of the carburetor so that all residues, deposits, and so on, everything that still sticks from gasoline, additives, and so on, is also dissolved, kept in suspension, and flushed out well. This complements the performance of the ultrasonic device fantastically. If you like, beyond that, the Tokopo TR uh, does that. This is intended to further enhance the optical cleaning performance. You will now see an image displayed. First, Tikopur R on. This is the carburetor after cleaning with the R. And now, a second image. This is exactly the same carburetor, and it has undergone a second cleaning cycle, oh, with TA. A little note. If you have indeed already bought, I would say, the wrong device, then at least use the correct cleaning protection. That already makes a big difference. All the information about this and the devices can be found, as always, in the video description. That was our little comparison test. If you have questions, suggestions, or requests, type away, leave a comment, or feel free to email us. We can also forward questions about ultrasound, which goes in depth, and we might not be able to answer ourselves directly to Mr. Bandolin. He has assured us of his help in this regard, saying that if there is something he can clarify, he is very, very happy to assist us. I'm looking forward to that. I wish you lots of fun with the project, much success, and see you in the next video. Bye, bye. A little addition, friends. Look, oh, I received this today. A pretty old device from Bandolin. There's a nameplate on the back, and if you look closely at the bottom, it says, Made in West Germany. The wall came down in 89, which means the device is over 30 years old, and I'll set it up again so you can take a look inside. You can also see in the tub that it's not exactly new anymore. Why am I showing you this? Quite simple. I completely left out the topic of device durability in the video, and I asked my dear wife, who films and edits the videos, if we could shoot this little addendum. That's why this is added at the end here. While, truthfully, the inexpensive device from the test already smells like burnt cable after some testing. We have here a 30-year-old device, and I'll show you all how well it works. I'm placing the lid of an accelerator pump in here, and that's not optimal anymore, because as I told you, lying on the floor is basically not good at all. Now we'll pour some warm water over it with a bit of decor. So, you can see a little something. I'm going to turn on the device now. The sound will be off again you know that it can't be recorded like this. This is just a very small example of how powerful the device is even after such a long time and seemingly many uses.